Good morning. Hang on. Good morning. <laughs> oh, I love I love your background. Thank you. I'm feeling above the earth in the moment. Beautiful. Awesome. So, how are you? I'm. Uh, it was a pretty intense week. Holy cow! There's Hi. just all my projects. There's a. Uh, intense emotions and, and things going on. So I guess full moon today or tonight. Yeah. yeah. So I imagine that has something to do with things. How about you? Oh, yes. We're feeling a full moon, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's, yeah, all, all good. You know, um, I, I'm really, I, I, want, I want to know, I am. Okay, let's. I, I'm watching my words. Um, I am going to start meditating more daily because I want that quantum leap to happen. And so I'm getting more visual, I'm bringing more visual into my goals, thinking it's our goals, but not sure for the visionary hub. So yeah, that's that's my goal that I'm working on. What exactly is the quantum leap? Quantum leap is taking um, my physical time and my thought process and living in the future as it's already happened or that it's already happening i'm not waiting for it to happen i'm putting myself there very nice yeah so have you have you re-examined your seven lifetime goals since you wrote them no i was just thinking i said geez did i have homework so <laughs> you know and i i don't think i wrote the seven i think i just had like five or something. I don't think I wrote seven. And I need to redo that map. Because I'm, I'm sitting here just like Christy. Christy was showing me hers and um, she had done the same thing just with sticky notes and she doesn't have it. Nice um, version. Yeah. So how, why don't you tell me what they are? Okay. If I have them, that's the flow map. Okay, so they must be all here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Where did you, did I do that on a separate piece of paper? I don't know. A lifetime goals. Okay, sorry. Um, and there's seven, right? Yeah. Okay. So I had flexibility to travel to 10 different countries, to leave a legacy that my children or family can take over to impact the world. Um, to have an acreage that is um, a sanctuary for others and that is self-sustainable. To have the visionary hub worldwide changing the story of their life. I see doing this with a great support team from around us traveling and going from country to country, city to city, changing the story of other people's lives. Relationships. Sorry, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, relationships to support and be supported in all things and to feel love and joy. Um, creative outputs, personal, let's see. Oh, that I am always open and receiving new opportunities to be creative in all areas of my life. Creative with my mind and hands, designing words, sewing, ideas, serving and helping others, bringing them health and joy. And to become more aware and heightened and heighten my energy 
and light to help others become more of themselves to bring peace to the world and more love. I am bringing more people in touch with nature. Okay, that's what I have. So is that seven or five or is there anything missing? No, I think that was seven. Oh, no, that wasn't seven. Um, to build a ground, a shared knowledge community and to build relationships that are in harmony. Okay. So th those are your sort of like longer term quantum leap places, right? Right. Um, and so when, when I vision, like when stuff comes to my head, it is more about utilizing and sharing actually the maps when i when i visualize like when stuff just kind of pops in my head it is about um the maps and having you know like i i see different tables and everybody um doing a map here doing a map there so that is my quantum leap that that's that's my quantum leap goal okay yeah, that, that's, that's what came to my head. Like, I didn't, yeah, like, and that's been a couple times now that I've actually visioned, and I'm not a visionary pe person. Like, I, I don't, I don't remember dreams. I don't really have any of that. Right. And so it was. So how did they come through dreams or did they just during the day or like how, oh, how did they pop in? During the day, just, it just popped in there. So really? I'm reading something. So right now I'm reading um, something like Change the Habit of Your Life with Joe Dispenza. Right. And yeah, he's talking about, um, you know, the quantum leap and what a person has to do. And just reading that being in the moment you know, when I sat back, I said, okay, what, what is my quantum leap or what? And yeah, that just came. Yeah. Okay. I okay. don't question it or anything. I just say, okay, what is it? Okay. Well, that's awesome. Um, okay. Let's have a little review, uh, pull out a, a blank piece of paper and you can't look at anything. And I want you to draw the flow map. Did you, did you spend any time uh, memorizing or? No, um, no, I haven't, but okay. So yeah, no, I'm good. Let's do, let's do that. Okay. So I'm drawing a circle. I'm drawing a triangle. So nine, three, six, one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, and um, on the other hand, as I'm thinking of this, Lori and I will send you the extra, you know, our, our portion. We've told the girls that that's what they need to do because okay. they haven't moved forward on even signing any kind of agreement or anything like that for the Visionary Hub. So. Okay. We've put that in their hands. Okay, thank you. Okay, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, okay, so I don't want to look. So I know one of them is past. One of them uh, is what? Past. That, right. Okay. Um, oh, shoot. Okay. Remember the primary triad? Um, I'm just trying to picture. I can I can picture the pink. Um, <laughs> the <laughs> pink alien. Um, the alien. Okay. The alien, and then they go to a purple mountain. Oh shit. <laughs> um. Pink, purple, and orange, or something like that. Path is orange. Path is orange. Yes, it is. But it okay. isn't. It's, it isn't one of the primary triad, though. Oh. Okay. 
369. What's the primary triad for any business? Um, so the stewarded direction. Yes. Is that the right word? Yep. That's yep. Okay. And then there's like resources, but I am I talking synergy? Is that where I'm getting my stuff from? Um, well, your synergy map can get through association kind of help you out because it's right above it. Yeah. Um, resources is on the map, but not in a primary triad. Okay. And then the other one is, oh, but, you know, I'm thinking more because we have the synergy map up on the wall. So that's what I'm uh, picturing. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm going back. What's that? Nothing. Are you cheating? Field. Um, resources. Jobs. Activities. Relationship. Oh, path to seven. Okay. Um, 2.8 is flow and agreements. Okay, so it's agreements. Okay, 2.8. Okay, six is relationships. And three, the sources. Oh, jobs. Okay. Sorry, I have to look. It's okay. Two is field. Oh, no, one is field. And two is resources. Okay, I knew that was in there. Um, activities, okay. Gifts, products or gifts? Products is 2.5? Yeah, like every, remember every at, at the flow, there's two words um, uh, okay. on the flow wheel. It's actually 20 words, um, but, so, but I give sort of nine just to start out. So every one of the flow has a dyad. And at some point, it's kind of like you're going to have a flow wheel with two words at each. So the cards. Oh, I didn't realize that. I know. Uh, it's just, it's too, it's too much. For okay. People. So we're, we're doing it sort of bits and pieces at a time. Um, okay. Let, give me an example of where you worked, somewhere you worked, uh, other than the Visionary Hub. Right. And I want you to go through each of the words and sort of describe that business through the through that word. Oh, okay. So okay. what's an example that you can use? Okay, so I worked at um, a, a Ford dealership. Okay. okay for, yeah, for quite some time. So um, 2.9, which is agreements. Yes. Right, okay. So agreement would happen many, many times. So an agreement would um, be to have a vehicle fixed at a certain amount of, for a certain amount of time, for a certain amount of, of price. Um, agreements would happen about, um, you know, getting picked up, getting picked, dropped off at a certain time, certain place. Agreements would happen um verbally written it would happen in the sales department so yeah so lots of lots of agreements would be happening okay what what is your value at agreements um i don't have that there wait i have to go back Um, 
after you're writing that. Okay, um, understanding. Okay, so now look at the, the same four dealership and bring in the value of understanding at looking at the agreements. Okay, right. Um, so yeah, so uh, an understanding of an agreement would be both both parties would agree, would understand. So the customer would understand the work that had to be done on the vehicle to get it fixed. And the customer service person would understand um, the timeline that the customer needed, say, the vehicle back by. So, yeah, so that's kind of a, a good understanding on both, both sides of the... Did you have a contract or an agreement with the uh, the company that was in written form? Um, not that I can recall, but yeah, I probably did. But I mean, I worked there for quite some time, so that would have happened, you know, when I first signed on, I guess. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Now look at it from uh, through the jobs lens. Okay. So um, the jobs lens say for a tech, he would understand the steps that he would need to do to get the work done in a time frame that was expected. The customer or the oh the customer service clerk would go through the steps that they would need for the customer, like getting their information and all of that. And they understood that that was their job to do to get whatever permanent um, information they needed for the customer. Hey, what's your value at job? Job was balance. Balance, okay. So bring that in when you're looking at the job. Okay. Um, so the balance, say, to that scenario would be to have, say, the customer needed it, needed their vehicle by, say, one, and the tech knew that with lunch hour, he wouldn't be done till two. So between the customer's needs, the tech and the service rider would balance out the job. So the tech would not miss his lunch hour, but would schedule a later lunch, lunch hour. So that would create like harmony and balance with every party in the system. Okay. Okay. Um, give me some more. Okay. So, or like, do you want me to, oh, like another story? Well, or, just like you, you're looking through the lens of jobs at yeah. that business system, uh, what would be the primary, um, like how many jobs, let's say we're in that business system? Okay, yeah. I mean, every every person that that's hired has a job to do. Right. So how many how many jobs would be in that dealership? Oh God. Fifty plus. Okay, and what would be the, the designations of the jobs? Like what are what are some of the names of the jobs? Okay, well, I mean there's Sales general manager, sales manager, new sales manager. There's salespersons. There's um, a finance person. There's accounting. There's parts. There's service. There's reception. Yeah. There's shuttle. Yeah. Just lots of different car wash. There's yeah. Okay. So like whenever you're looking through that two point three lens. The first thing you're looking at the job infrastructure, mm -hmm. seeing like all of the jobs <clears throat> from the point of view, the whole system. Right. So now like you're like, imagine you're the president kind of thing. 
and right. you, you got to balance all of the jobs. Okay. Did what? You, did, you, that? That? did you jump above the system in a sense and see it differently or? Yeah, like it's, yeah. Like, I mean, it's easy enough to take say one portion, <clears throat> and, you know, make that work, but to have the whole system flow um, consecutively or just flow in harmony that really takes um, a different picture or a different onset. So like I, I could see see him like the owner or the president, whatever, really um, looking at the whole picture and how each thing flows within each other to create the harmony and you know, all the different jobs and how they all have to really work and flow together to create, you know, balance or harmony, whatever their end result is. Right. That, yeah, that's huge. So without an understanding of each job and without, um, say, the resources that each job needs and, and the path of each job and the relationships that are built or not built or um, torn apart because things aren't flowing. Yeah, yeah, this, like this whole map takes into account that whole, the whole system. Like that's crazy. That's crazy. So yeah, like there's no way one, you know, one um, area of work can do it all by themselves, right? They all need to flow together and they all need to be in communication. They all need to be um, in agreement and yeah, it's crazy. So are you seeing something a little different, like a little bit of a whole systems analysis in a sense? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, let's switch switch over to relationships and what's your value there? Um, happiness. Happiness, okay. So now look at the same system and tell me all the different relationships that exist. Oh, okay. And, and then sort of how that relates to happiness. Right. Okay, so um, there has to be a relationship with uh, say the service writer and the text in the back. I mean, they have to be congealed and be able to converse and all of that. Excuse me. Um, there has to be a relationship built with the service writer, say, and the client. You know, we have to build that trust and relationship. Um, there has, well, I mean, there has to be relationships within the whole dealership. So the salespeople have to be able to have a good relationship with the service writer or the tech, um, the credit department, the, yeah, everybody. Um, so yeah, so there's relationships with the sales people and clients, there's relationships with service and clients, there's relationships with um, the credit department or the finance department and clients, there's relationships with finance and the sales. Yeah. Okay. And so bring in, now you're just looking at from an internal point of view, all the internal relationships. Now go to the outside and look at all the external relationships. Okay, so go to like the outside, say of that Ford dealership. Yeah. And go out into the community as well. Just just think about for that for that Ford dealership to work, 
what are all the relationships outside of it that are sort of going on in the background all the time that um, one might not see? Okay, so yeah, so if we totally look at the bigger picture, um, service or, or parts would have a relationship with the other manufacturers or other part suppliers so they can get say their parts here in time so they you know build a relationship with the other part suppliers um, and the same with say salespeople or the sales manager right they they have built outside relationships with um, other used car dealers or Ford reps and things like that so um, the relationship certainly does expand further and more outward than a person really thinks. Um, supplies and all of that that the dealership gets for the, for the customer, or not for the customers, but for the salespeople and for the tech stuff and for the parts. I mean, that itself is is in, is a relationship that is built. So yeah. So you've got your also government institutions. You've got your banking institutions. You've got the place where the steel is 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 mined, and then the steel is sent to the manufacturer, and then the manufacturer builds it, and the manufacturer sends it. And you know it's it's amazing, right? Like the, the amount of of connections that actually a, a a car dealership has in terms of the overall business system, right? Like the whole economy in many yeah. ways is centered around the car you know yeah. with oil and gas and roads and just it's it's one of the main products right so um and so so now happiness how does how does the value of happiness come into all that okay well if if the relationship say with a sales person and their Ford dealer is not very con conducive or very friendly and they don't have a good relationship of course it's not you know not a happy relationship and so you know the the ford dealer which really holds a lot of power <clears throat> can very simply make life very miserable say for that ford dealer right if there isn't a good conducive relationship and that happens and that can happen um, everywhere. So if um, the salesperson isn't treating, say, the, um, the tech or whatever, that tech is no way going to jump on and help a salesperson, which in regards, that salesperson is trying to help a customer to get something repaired. And if that internal relationship isn't happening, that it's the customer that really suffers the most because you know it's stagnant and it's not not happening. So, yeah, it's very hap It's um, very important to have you know a, a good, happy relationship, whatever that may look like. Okay, so now put the three together: put the job relationship and and agreement together and put the values of balance, understanding, and happiness together. So how do they all connect together? Okay. Well, um, yeah, actually really good. So if, if people, if the, say the top, the top guy, the president, um, has a good understanding, say, of the work, workings of the, the company and has a understanding of what each per, what creates say happiness or um, balance in that whole system he knows that things will run that much smoother so he's probably very attuned or you would hope right he, that he would be attuned on to into the needs of the of his people which if he's in tune he knows 
um, how important happiness is. And if they're happy, that alone will create balance within the whole system. Mm. So that's the primary triad now. So mm -hmm. now let's go to 2.5 and products and uh, take a look at the Ford dealership through that lens. What do you see? Okay. And, what, so, what's your, um, and what's your value? Consistency. Okay. So okay. Bring, bring that in too. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So products. I mean, there's all types of products that is in that dealership. So it go from cars to um, Ford, you know, Ford products or Ford merchandise all the way to parts and tires and, and the works. And so if they are consistent with the product, then they will have, they will probably build like loyalty from, from clients because the consistency is always there. Okay. And um, the, the, the clients, you know, will, will know that, okay, if I need a Ford truck, I know they're going to have it or they can get it in whatever color, whatever size. So that consistency is, I would think important and builds trust and reliability, but to always have the same thing. So Ford, they know it's always going to be Ford. Right, they're not going to bring in a, a Kia truck or something like that and try to sell that. So right. So the salesperson, if they were using consistency, would bring about all the you know Ford number one, all the the great things that Ford has, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so let's let's sit look at activities and paths. And remember, do you remember the the uh, the um, the time cycles with each one? Uh, yes. So well, it, I don't remember, but I know I've got them written down. Okay, so it products, it's seasonal, right? Right. And then activities is daily. And path is minute to minute. So if you're looking at the difference between uh, what value do you have at activities? Uh, da, 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 da. Generosity. Okay, and then what do you have at path? Passion. Okay, so passion at minute to minute, generosity daily. So the difference between operations and services or activities and path is that operations are all the things that you're doing in the background that you don't get paid for specifically, right? And, right. And the path is your direct connection to the customer minute to minute. Okay. Can't just let me bring that. Okay, so the path is minute to minute. And that services and the synergy wheel. So that's where your direct connection to the customer is. But operations and activities, that's in the sort of like background. That's all the things that have to get done to run your business. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the okay, so, so, so now look at the the okay. word dealership through those two, compare those two ah. and tell me what you see and use the values for each one. Right. Okay. So activities, I mean, a, a day, daily activities, I, I would say there's almost like a routine for people when they, you know, come through the door and so they have a routine and they have like a, a daily, almost like a, a checklist, you know, okay, this is, these are the, these are the steps that they do on a daily basis for, for activities. So um, like, and I always go back to like the service area. So when a service writer comes in, right, they have their, there's steps that they do daily to get the day going and to get the service guy, the text 
in the back. So they have that whole system on a daily basis. And what they, the path that happens in that area, or minute to minute. So path is related to the minute to minute. Okay, I, I'm kind of stuck on that one. Okay, direct connection to the customer. Okay, now imagine a customer walking in the door. Right. And uh, they walk, like there's an actual path. They, they come off the street, they come in the front door, they meet the reception and the reception uh, says hello. And that took like say three minutes. And then they say, okay, we'll get you a salesperson. Salesperson is gonna come. So they wait in a chair and then salesperson walks up and then salesman starts. Starts to say, hello, how you doing? Now, now you're in direct connection to the customer. Salesperson takes the person to the to the to the outside. Starts taking them through the cars. You're you each. There's an actual physical path, but there's also a mental path of the conversation that's occurring. Right. right. So mm -hmm. the salesperson, like it's a first contact convo. All of a sudden, then starts doing a needs analysis. Uh, then jumps into a presentation. Yeah. And so you can look at the convo cards at this part. Because you've got a physical path and you've got a mental path. Mm -hmm. And so in the background are the people doing activities, you know, washing the floor, uh, doing all what they're doing. But this salesperson is directly with the customer. So and they're passionate. They're passionate about the cars. They're passionate about, you know, uh, uh, why they're selling the cars. And so that's very different from the person in the back who's, what's your value at activities again? Um, generosity generosity and it could be that um everyone is generous with their time everyone is generous with uh you know there's a generous spirit mm -hmm. that everyone's pitching in and nobody's really thinking about oh i've got to do this and why aren't they doing that everyone's very generous right you're generous you're generous with your time you're generous with your work um so that would be how the, how the two work Okay, so yeah, so yeah, okay, so yeah, I uh, yeah, totally understand the path. I mean, you know, the path of, of the client, the, the path of um, the sales or the, the tech and things like that. And yeah, most, most times people that are in whatever job they're doing, like maybe I shouldn't say most times, but a lot of times you may find People are very passionate, say about the Ford brand, you know, as a customer. And the sales person is very passionate about, um, you know, showing off the the features and stuff of of a vehicle. And and he and you're right. So break it down. He is doing that minute by minute, and he's probably thinking ahead to the next step and to the next process. And most times, the salesperson is very um, generous with their time because they know sometimes that a client takes a fair amount of time to make a decision. So um, he's not rushing. He is just sitting, going through the stages, the path of trying to make a sale with a, with a, with a customer and having different activities to engage them with, I guess, too. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I guess, you know, the minute to minute just kind of, um, like that's more of a further breakdown that I wasn't really paying attention to, you know, how, how you spend each, each minute for each, yeah. Each task takes 30 minutes or, right? Yeah. So, I mean, if you look at the hour, like the relationship, you, you have the hour relationship. It's like here, we have an hour relationship and we're, yeah. in, a, we're in a coaching situation, right? So yeah. as we talk, we're going through different convo types that are unconscious um, and we're going in a minute to minute, but we have the hour together. So we're looking at these different time cycles are sort of like different containers. Right. 
Okay. You're looking at your activities, you got your daily activities. It's like Groundhog Day. It's a container for all your activities. You just look at what am I doing all day? You're doing a bunch of activities if you're just looking through that lens. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the seasonal lens at what you're doing, you may be spending two hours specifically on a program that's a seasonal program that you're putting design into, right? Or you're uh, organizing it in, in, in such a manner. You're doing activities, but it's more at a higher level of, of working on your products. So that distinguishes the four and the five. The four is more logistics, but the five is more creativity. Okay, yeah. So you're looking at what you're creating or the programs you're creating over a seasonal. You're looking at it seasonally, which is very different from looking at it day to day, right? Absolutely, yeah. So one of the main things here is you're teaching the mind to think in multiple time cycles, each that have their own lenses. Okay, yeah. And then, yeah. And then giving it a color code. So these, these are all very, you know, these are new skills. This doesn't exist, right? This is a, a very new skill. And the reason we're going in depth on this is because I, you know, I, I know I can give a lot of information and maps and stuff but that doesn't go to the depth of you getting this because now I, i'm getting it so you've got to memorize this and you've got to put it in your own words <clears throat> you've got to see it so you understand that for dealership right right yeah absolutely you understand everything about it. Yeah. what you're doing is you're putting over this operating system to just see how all the parts connect together okay and once you understand a whole system you can then now you could look at the library you could look at a school. You could look at any other business and do what you just did with the cars and just go, okay, well, what are the jobs? Okay, what are the agreements between these people? Oh, what kind of relationships do they have? Oh, what are their activities? What are their products? Like, you can do a systematic analysis of any business. And that's the whole idea behind the inflow matrix. It's a, it's a, it's a, it can custom design any business system with values, but it can also be used as a universal model for the mind. And that when you guys, like as your team grows, if yeah. you want to have that as a primary reference point, that's the primary reference point for, you know, organizing things, right? Yeah. And that's what you'll be teaching to other people. That, that's awesome. Yeah. I like that. Okay. So let's, let's, let's finish that up. We got a uh, we got field and resources <clears throat> at 2.1 and 2.2. Uh, what are your values? Um. For 2.2, .2, it's life. Is that a value? It's, it's, a, it's a value in the value card. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's a bit of a strange value compared to the other ones, but it's, it's like the value of life. It's like, do you value life? I mean, at resources, it's kind of like, if you valued life, you know, would you pave a, you know, a, a, a big field of nature, like to make a parking lot? Yeah, right. You might not, right? Um, no. So it's it's kind of like it's a big picture value for sure. Okay, so, so okay, so look at look at and what do you have at the field? Um, field, I have goodness. Goodness. Okay, so let's look at that first. <coughs> let's look at the the car dealership through the lens of field and the value of goodness. What do you see, or how how could that come in? Okay. Can you give me the definition of field again? Well, field would essentially, the primary field would be the, the lot, the, the territory, the, 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 you know, the place that the dealership exists upon. Okay. Right, that would be the first one. Um, there's also the building itself would be a field. Um, the parking lot is a field. Um, each office is its own field. The field is like a whole lot, like it's it's kind of like all the different spaces that are connected together. Like right. you and I are in a field right now. If you had three people around a water cooler, there's a conversational field. Um, so it's it's kind of like this word that can be used to describe any kind of space that has a kind of boundary. But then you have multiple fields within fields. So. Okay, yeah, so no, that brings, that gives me some context. So um, boundary, there's like a, each tech has like a station. So 
so they have their you know their their space that is kind of blocked out for them um you know very easily crossed that everybody has has their space sales people have they have their space their field um finance has their office space um, the same with um, accounting and things like that so yeah when you put it in that content so that breaks it down to that lunch counter that all has their space but when you go outside so each so each um salesperson or each person in the building has their field has their space that whole space is put under a roof of the Ford building. That Ford building is placed on a strip of land. That land is part of the city of Yorkton. The city of Yorkton is part of the province of Saskatchewan. The province of Saskatchewan is part of Canada. Canada is part of the continent of North America and so far, so, so forth. So, okay, that gave me a really good contents of what field is. So we bring it back in. Um, a customer comes to a dealership, they have their field so there's parking spots available. Um, the lot itself has parking spots, spots available for each vehicle that is for sale. And yeah, so there's lots of designated areas for specific things. So yeah, that thank you for that because I wasn't, I was just totally lost. Okay, and that's a great way of seeing it of the embedded field of the planet to the country, to the province, to the community, to the <laughs> that's a great way to see it but it's it's a very so if then if you look at your field and then you have a path that you're walking with activities are going on right so you can bring those three together yeah. so how would you bring goodness into that field okay so goodness to me is like it, it, it's a feeling so when you're walking into the door of that dealership um how's the energy is it a good feeling energy do you feel good do you feel welcome when you're walking in that door as a customer when you are um with say a salesperson are they making you feel good and comfortable and you know not pressured um the same with a service writer are they actually making the customer feel good, feel trusted, that this is a trusted place, a good place to be? So yeah, so lots. And, and again, um, that's the outward, but inside the whole dealership, um, like, are, you know, is there goodness between, say, um, the relationships of the tech and the salesperson is there is that a a, a good um, a good feel is the when when an activity happens so an activity as um, you know a customer driving into the service department whatever is there does the generosity exert itself with the customer service you know rider being right there and helping them with their vehicle is the path that the customer takes within the dealership is that easily um manipulated or i don't like that word manipulated but is it easy for the customer to flow through the dealership to the destination that they want and, and, and to the field, to the area that they want. So there's a path to the field 
and for whatever activity needs to happen. And yeah, you just really want a good feel on that whole system. Okay, uh, now, now it, that's very good. Now at uh, 2.2 resources, what's your value? Life. Life, okay, so now look at all the resources in the, start to name all the resources in the Ford dealership. Okay, so um, from there's copier, there's printer, there's electricity, there's water, there is heat, there's coolant, um, and then we go, there's people resources, there's um, office furniture, there's chairs, there's coffee, there's supplies for the tech, there's supplies for the salespeople, there's supplies for everybody, like the accountant, all of that. Yeah, there's <coughs> sources, there are <coughs> of used vehicles, there's production of Ford vehicles. The other source would be um, where, like parts, where do they go to resource the parts that they need? So there's that type of, of resource. There is um, service resource. So the text in the back. Um, <coughs> ooh, bless you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> As you're going through your thing, my I'm maybe <laughs> ring is hitting me or something. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, or, or it's just the quantum, the quantum field is affecting me and I'm I'm you're 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 getting it to such a degree that I'm <laughs> you're too funny. <laughs> so anyways yeah the resources so I'm just trying to um build the way out so um the building itself is a resource for um say even people driving by you know if they're looking for a Ford or just any kind of dealership, right? That's a resource for for clients, potential clients that way. Um, yeah, so there's lots of different resources. Okay. Um, is is the value is life. So I mean the building itself is a concrete physical type um building okay no i want to go back in so life so do the people at work have life and energy are they happy are they you know feeling good do they feel understood are they um yeah so the, the people itself do they have the resource that makes their life easy. And, and then you take it out a bit more. So, um, are, so I'm taking it to a bit of a different content. So vehicles on the lot for sale, like, are they just kind of blah and stagnant or are the salespeople out there giving the vehicle some life so are they tying balloons or they have you know big decorative sale signs and things like that so to me that's another part of bringing life and energy to you know different things okay to, to the resource right okay. how are they bringing things to life right right very good, very good. um so now we've got two more we had flow uh present moment and that was yearly, right? At resources, that was yearly. And at lifetime was, at this field was lifetime. Sorry, what was? So at, at resources 2.2, it was yearly. And at uh, 2.1 field, it's lifetime. Okay, and um, 2.8 is flow, no. And that's the present moment. Present moment, okay. 
And what value do you have there? Um, honor. We're doing the flow map, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I have honor. But how come I have strategies written there instead okay, of- Okay, well, that's another one of the double words. Oh, okay. Where you can kind of interchange them in a sense, but right. the flow is more the inner and then the outer strategies. Okay. So um, strategies links to marketing, but it's also the individual being in the flow. So what's your value again there? Um, honor. Honor, okay. So how does, if you look at the, let's say you're in the flow, you're a salesperson in the uh, car dealership, how does honor come into that? Okay. Um, honor is being truthful. So if, a, if they're working with a client and they're looking at a used vehicle, right? Um, be, giving, being honorable in telling the truth of say, you know, if that vehicle has any mechanical issues or, um, you know, how the vehicle was treated or, you know, just b being honorable in what they're presenting. Mm. Okay. And that's the same as say in, um, in finance, you know, being honorable in regards to the information that they're giving the client you know, any extra fees, hidden fees and things like that. So, um, and, and in the present moment, like right here and now, this is what you will be paying, you know, for the next five years or whatever. So being honorable is, is a good thing. And in, in the flow, so um, being upfront with the client and say, you know, this happens, at, like as a salesperson, so these are the steps that will be happening for you to purchase this vehicle. So going through the flow at, at the present moment. Okay. Perfect. So again, with, with people, sorry. And if I was to look at, say, the flow of the dealership again, you want that continuity with... Um, you know, service and sales and finance and all of that. You really want that to flow together and you want honor or you want, yeah, like in the present moment. So um, the salespeople, you know, would want to present honorable to say the tech or the service writer so they could get their job done for the sales, for the customer kind of thing. Okay. Now in the center point conversations, uh, what's the value? Um, happiness and organization. Oh, you got two. Okay. Um, okay. Now look at all the conversations happening in the Ford dealership uh, through those lenses. Through, uh, through all of them? Like the, um, or what? Actually, yeah, if you could, um, but you could just look at the values first. Right, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so happiness, well, I mean, you just, you kind of, I, I would, let's see, how would conversations happen? Not always are conversations, you know, happy or, or light, right? There's some serious conversations. And a lot of sometimes there's some you need to kind of organize those conversations before you get into say maybe some more um, some light, lighter and happier conversations. So I, I could see I, I see conversations happening more structurally because time is say an issue so you want to get through a point first before you kind of get to where you can have a little bit more lighter and um happier conversations so organization in a conversation is probably really important for this whole system 
for things to flow and to be happier at the end. So once, so an example would be um, a salesperson going to the service writer and say, hey, my, my cars, my customer is purchasing a car today and we need mud flaps and um, tonneau cover put on, on the truck. And so those conversations would happen first before, and then at the end, a conversation would, would kind of look like, you know, the salesperson going to the service writer and say, you know, good job. This really worked out well. The customer was really happy with all the work, you know, thank you for getting things done on time for me and things like that. So it's almost two different conversations at two different times in a way. Right. Which could happen, right? Right. Okay. So you've done all the flow. You've done all the values. And give me, we're at the near the end here. Um, give me a sort of a, an assessment of what you just learned. Okay. So it was really interesting in breaking these parts down of the flow map and getting an understanding how each part of the map they worked in a company, okay? So we took it that we really broke it down into different portions of a business. And then we took the whole wheel and looked at it from a perspective of how each of these um, I was going to say each of these lenses work together in harmony or in flow together in uh, a business. So um, how important the agreements were and how the field resources and jobs and activities. And it was really good to break it down individually and to put pieces together. And then as we overlook the whole thing, yeah, it totally makes sense how you can take this one map, flow map, and put it into any situation. That's so cool. So cool. So that's... Um, uh... If you if you trust like you're training the mind right you're training the mind to see yeah you're training the mind to bring a different value within that lens again that's a new sort of skill mm -hmm. and you might want to practice it by sort of uh you can dissect uh even watching a movie um you know kind of switch and go okay what are all the jobs that i'm seeing okay what are all the resources i'm seeing okay what's the path like just simple stuff like that right um or look at you know other businesses in yorkton either ones you worked in or just when you're walking by or something you just kind of like train to see the, the different part like it's it's kind of like immediate you come into a store and okay there's the three jobs okay they've got you know here's all your different products they're selling they're, they're doing the activities in the background they're you know there's it's you just start to see okay these are just the parts and what you're doing is you want it to become unconsciously incompetent i mean you go from unconscious incompetence you don't know that you don't know it to conscious incompetence where you, you don't quite get now we're moving into conscious competence where oh, you're yeah. memorizing it you understand it you, you you've applied it to something which you already know the big thing is you want to get people to apply it to what they already know okay and that's when the association comes in because what we're coming in with is an abstract mental layer right, right? Yeah. system and, and it's, everyone's got their experience. They know their experience, but they don't know this model. So you got to attach the experience to the model, just like you. So now, you know, for sure, you know, the Ford dealership, you can apply that to the visionary hub. Yeah. Right. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So do yeah. you still like looking at your value system? You, you're still happy with it? Like you like all the parts? 
or do you feel like you want to change any? I might change like the resources in life, but uh, I'm going to live with it because, um, yeah, when we, you know, when I could physically, mentally look deeper into that value, yeah, I think I'm, I'm good with it. Um, yeah, at the moment, no, I wouldn't change anything. Okay. Okay. Just to check, because a big, what you can do, like, I think you should have the maps for about a year first, just to kind of test them out. But then right. when you want to make a change, like all of a sudden, let's say you bring kindness in instead of passion, or you bring yeah. um, something where you go, I want more of this, or I need to learn this, or like, there's always the values that we have that we hold dearly that we're always using. And then there's the values which we want to learn, which maybe we don't have enough of. Ah. And so you're balancing those around like honesty for you. You don't have to think about it. You value honesty. It's there, but maybe yeah. you're not uh, assertive enough or something. Right. Yeah. So you might, you can bring in the honesty part, which you already have, or you can bring in the assertive part, which you feel you need more of. Definitely. Yeah. So it becomes your, your pot prey for learning where you're for the rest of your life, you're going, ah, oh, you know, I need more commitment at, at agreements or I need more, uh, clarity at, at communication okay whatever it may be right yeah. And, and oh, that's that, awesome. yeah wow that's yeah i wouldn't have thought of it that way but yeah that that's really cool oh my god that's really cool yeah, it's a prime reference for lifelong learning at the value level but then it's also applying right to any business that somebody's in so basically anyone could be your client because you can help them in whatever business they're in, right? You're just adding tools to assist them, usually to sort of communicate better. Right. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Okay. So I, I didn't, uh, I, I, I sort of felt a little feedback that I was coming in with a little too many maps that are a little bit too, I just wanted to make sure that this now is solid within you and that you have, and I, I would suggest maybe talking with Kaylee and cause she really into the flow map and to maybe do the same exercise that I did with you that you could do with her. Maybe she could do a curling or to take some something that she has and just go through that process and, and, and go through it. So both of you sort of, you have an example of taking someone through it and then she sees, oh, here's another way of, of, of bringing the map into someone. Okay, yeah, no, that's a good idea. I can certainly do that. Awesome. And, maybe, and maybe test Lori. Um, you could maybe sit down with Lori and see, okay, this is what I've done. Let me just test yours. And just, okay. yeah. cause it's, it's like mutual sort of learning, right? Cause you're all, you're all creating that same reference point. Cause when I think you all get it, it's kind of like, then if you just go flow wheel path or whatever it is, the person's just immediately there with you. Right. Yeah. No, that's, a, that's a good idea. And that's what, yeah, we definitely need to do it more often than once a week ourselves. Right. We need to do it. Yeah. Okay. So that's great. Great work today. Um, yeah, thank I, you for being here. <laughs> it's it's uh, a pleasure to be here and a uh, pleasure to watch. It's funny because you're, I just see you're a very visual learner. And so, and to me, you have to process it through speaking as a learning style. Yeah. So, um, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. So have a great day. Okay. Um, do you have anybody else today? I think Lori. I think uh, Lori is going to take over the three o'clock slot because she said that uh, uh, Carrie couldn't come today. So, um, yeah. so Lori later on. Okay. Okay. Awesome. All right. Okay. Right. Bye. -bye.